Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 11 of the Nine Inning Know-It-All podcast. I am Josh, your host, and I am coming to you. It's actually Thursday, day 21 of my no baseball, no softball quarantine type thing. Uh, but this will actually come out on Friday. Uh, the reason for that is I actually had Jay Miller on earlier today on Thursday and already posted that uh, podcast out. So we're just going to post this one tomorrow, which actually works out perfectly well. I'm pumped for this one. Uh, ben Harley, he's the pitching coach for Centralia Community College, which is just up the road from where I am at. He's also the head coach of the Highline Bears, uh, which is a summer league team. So we're going to talk to him a little bit about that. But guys, I'm excited for next week. I've actually got a number of guests already lined up, as well as having a number of people that I am communicating with uh, for the upcoming weeks, uh, even into early May, I got people who are interested. So I'm excited for this. This is going to be, you know, keep being fun. What we're doing right now, this podcast has been really, it's blowing up. I think today I just checked it and I had like 136 uh, listens today alone, which is mind blowing for me because I didn't expect to have that many at this point. I was hoping for 10, 15 a day, but to be that many is just, it's going awesome. So Thank you to everybody who's listening. Thank you to all the guests. But let's go ahead and jump right into this. Ben, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. A little, uh, a little bored without baseball, but <laughs> I'm, I'm coping. Yeah, it's been nice actually to kind of be home and I mean, my wife and I have a six month old, so it's been kind of nice to be able to be home and hang out with her and I'm going to watch Harper learn how to sit up and start to eat. And it's been kind of a it would be nice to be at baseball. It's been nice to be at home with the family. Yeah, definitely. You know, for baseball players and coaches, and even for myself, media-wise, you know, I don't get to spend a lot of days and nights home during the springtime and even the summertime. So, you know, obviously you have your, your, your daughter you've been able to spend time with, but what else have you been doing just to kind of get through this and, and kind of get through each day? I've been really trying to use it as a chance to continue to learn and educate myself as a coach. And then today we had another team meeting with Centralia. I uh, really went over what the players should be focusing on for the next couple months, making sure especially that our pitchers are ready for summer ball, and really just making sure that they understand what the plan is moving forward and make sure that they're at ease and know what's going on and they have all the, their questions answered. Yeah, you know, and you just talked about, you know, you're a pitching coach and you're a summer league coach, you know, and I saw on Twitter you had some concerns of, you know, getting pitchers ramped up for the summer season. What are some things you're telling your pitchers to do so that way when the summer does come along, it's not just going to be a cold start and guys really putting their arms at risk? Yeah, definitely. We actually today laid out an eight-week plan to make sure that these guys are ready to, ready to roll when they get to the summer. And we also talked about just what the proper protocol should be when they get to their summer team and making sure that they understand – that they need to communicate with their, their summer coaches. They don't necessarily know those coaches. And they need to make sure that they have an open line of communication to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that always happens during for summer ball is guys will have, you know, they'll get to pitch a few innings, but a lot of times they'll get shut down or, or kind of, you know, limited number of innings they can pitch. But this summer is going to be a little bit different having no spring season are you going to see, do you think you're going to see a lot of guys really try and uh, stretch their arms out and really take advantage of the whole summer? Uh, I think so. I think a lot of, especially like we get guys for the Bears that'll come in and they'll have an inning limit. So you might get a guy from uh, a different D1 that comes in and he, uh, he can throw 20 innings. And this summer he may be able to throw as many as he feels comfortable. But what I'm hoping is that a lot of summer teams will take the first month and really build their pitchers up and go one inning at a time, two innings at a time, and really make sure the guys are healthy, and then get into July, the beginning of August, and then start to stretch guys out. Because, yeah, we want our guys to get our innings, but we also want to be smart about what they're doing and make sure they go back to school healthy in the fall. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a really a whole different mindset for summer league coaches. I know, you know, coaches, obviously, you want to win. Even summer league, you know, that's one of the things I've, I've kind of realized. This year, unlike any other – guys are going to want to win championships in their summer league because they have, they didn't get that chance to play during the spring, but at the same time yep. for coaches, they got to adjust. And so yeah, I think it's good for coaches to have to adjust, but also it's going to be good for the players. I think it's going to be a good mutual, mutually beneficial situation for everybody. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think guys are going to come in with a competitive edge this summer that they may have not necessarily had in the past. And they're going to want to get after it, which is going to be fun to see. I bet we'll see a, a different spirit when it comes to the weight room, comes to the long toss, working on all their development. I have a feeling guys are going to really want to get after it for two solid months, which is going to be fun to be a part of. Absolutely. You know, you know, for you, you know, you are the pitching coach at Centralia and you're also the head coach for the Highline Bears. Now, you know, we don't know what's going to happen this summer, but what things are you looking forward to this summer, you know, when baseball does kick off and, and getting back out there? Um, one of the reasons why I'm excited to be with the Bears is just because of the uniqueness of the team. Like we have one of the more unique schedules in the Northwest. We play West Coast League teams. We have teams from San Francisco come up, go up to Canada. We play the Cascade Collegiate League uh, showcase team. And it's really a fun schedule. And we have guys from all across the country. And it's really a time where guys come and they make some memories that they'll have for the rest of their lifetimes. And it'll be some of the best memories they have of their career. And being able to be a part of that and help lead the team is something that really gets me excited. And then also just helping these guys reach their own personal goals. Like they may come in and they want to do in velocity or they want to work on their control or they don't want to work on their hitting approach and just helping them learn for two months and get better to, to head back to the fall and compete for a job at their own school. Yeah, definitely. You know, having covered, you know, some West coast league and cascade collegiate league the last couple of years, you know, it's been, it's, I love seeing guys from other parts of the country, like, like Arizona and they get here and realize that it's not as hot. The weather's beautiful. The, the scenery is beautiful. And for them, it's more than just even baseball. They just love where they're playing because the Northwest is, it's a, it's a beautiful place to play baseball. Just the, the stadiums are beautiful as well. Oh, it's awesome to be able to play all summer in 70 to 90. And we have some guys who come from California, come from Texas, come from Arizona that are trying to get out of 110 degree heat. And they just love it. And a lot of them are like, oh, I wish I'd gone to school up here. But they, they can come up for the summer, have a good time, and they go back to their schools. And, and that's something they end up cherishing for the rest of their lives. Yeah, definitely. And I've talked to a few guys, you know, who they were just blown away when it's, they ask like, Hey, is this normal weather? And it's 80 degrees out. I'm like, yeah, this is what we always have. And it, it's fun to see their eyes light up. It just, they know they're not going to be sweating and dying every game. They're going to have nice fun evenings of baseball. Yeah. You're not dying in the middle of July in 110 degrees heat. And it's, <laughs> it's a fun environment getting to play in front of some fun crowds. and It's a good time. Yeah, it is. And, you know, and not just, having the Northwest is a beautiful place to play. We actually have a lot of talent up here in the Northwest. Now we don't have all the D one schools you'd have on the East coast, that type of stuff, but there is still talent, you know, all the way through the D ones. We do have the junior colleges, the, you know, NAIA schools. There's a lot of amazing talent up here. So for you, when you're working with these guys, how awesome is it to see the talent level that we have in this area? Oh, it's a good time. And especially for our guys who they may stay local for summer ball. And they're going to compete against guys who are from across the country. And they quickly realize, oh, this is some amazing baseball that they can't can compete with anybody across the country. And that's one reason why we like having our, our Centralia guys stay and play for PIL teams and some West Coast League teams if we can get them a roster spot. And it gives them an opportunity to play against some of the best while also getting to stay at home, be with family. And they realize, oh, I can play with some of the best in the country. Yeah, absolutely. I you know I've been, you know, having covered the NWAC since 2015, I've been blown away with the talent level. And, you know, obviously you're, you're with Centralia, which is in the West region and the West region, you know, lower Columbia, Tacoma, uh, you got Pierce and, and now you guys and Centralia are really improving and growing. What's it like to be in that, that region, but also just in the NWAC? Uh, it's a lot of fun to know that every single weekend when in league play that you need to bring your A game. It really gets you fired up during the week and helps the players stay focused and continue to develop. And one of the things we do preach at Centralia is that we're here to develop and our goal is to move them on to the next level. If that's D1, D2, D3, NAI, whatever it may be. And for them to know that they're going to get to play against some of the best competition in the Northwest for junior colleges every single weekend, it really gets them going and helps them develop every single week. Yeah. And then, you know, Obviously, our, the season up here in the Northwest and across the country was, was cut short. Um, but for you, I mean, you had the fall. You guys ha did have some games early on in the season to at least see guys. What was it like to be out there coaching and being, you know, just on the field for the time we did have? Uh, it was fun. It was a good time to really see. We're, we're a pretty young team. We were starting seven freshmen on the field. 
and to see those young guys get out and really compete and see what they could do. And then when other guys came on the field and had their opportunities, to really just get to see what we have as a team. And we're going to have the majority of our group coming back next year because of how young we are and everybody, again, getting another year of eligibility. And just to know heading into the fall that this is what we have, this is what each guy needs to work on. Like, yeah, it was only 10 games, but in the long run, it was a very valuable 10 games. That'll really help these guys when it comes to moving on to a new school. Yeah, and, and you guys, I mean, you do have guys who are going to be, who are going to move on, but you do have a lot of guys who are staying. And, and what kind of, um, you know, it doesn't, this whole situation where guys are getting another year back, I think it's great, but it also does bring up challenges for coaches because now you have guys who return who maybe wouldn't have, you have recruits coming in. So what, what do you think the atmosphere is going to be like come this fall when you've got, you know, pretty big group of guys out there playing? Yeah, one thing we do at Centralia is we make sure we don't bring in too many guys. Uh, we don't want to be a school that brings in 60 guys in the fall. That When we bring in a group of guys, they're all guys, and we want to make sure they're part of the brotherhood. But what I think it's going to really do is create an atmosphere of competition. There's going to be better players. There's going to be maybe one extra guy in your position. It's going to really force guys to put in that extra work in the weight room, make sure they come in in the fall in shape, and really be ready to compete. And for our sophomores moving on, like they got to see this year, we've tried to make a culture change in the program and then they really helped lay the foundation, which we're going to be forever thankful for those guys. And they'll be able to take that same competitiveness that we had all year to their next school. Yeah. I mean, and like you said, there is a change up in Centralia. I mean, I remember when I first covered the NWAC, the Centralia was, was a team on the schedule, but wasn't someone that, you know, teams really looked out for like that. But, but now I'm starting to hear and even see, a lot of coaches are, are changing their mindset. You know, Centralia is coming in. They're going to be competitive. You know, what things are you guys really focusing on to really make Centralia a more competitive team, especially in that very tough West region? Yeah, one thing we're really big about is that our, our players, our student athletes, wanting to make sure that they're doing very well in the classroom. Uh, we set a quarter goal of having a 3-3 GPA as a team. Uh, we went over our, our GPAs today during our Zoom meeting and very proud of how our guys did in the classroom. And then when guys are taking care of the business in the classroom, they'll take care of business on the field. It's the same atmosphere, the same competitiveness in the classroom will, will translate. And then really just being there for the players every single day, making sure they have a very clear development plan. Uh, we have a 60-page development plan that we go through with every single player, and we, we tailor it to each guy. So if our center fielder needs to be doing something different with his hip mobility in the weight room, then our left fielder will take the time to make that adjustment to make sure that each guy is getting what they need to develop. Uh, it's not just one blanket plan that is handed to them at the beginning of the fall, and we just watch them away here, and we want to make sure they're getting everything they need. Yeah, and, you know, having that plan, especially now, I mean, a lot of people keep talking about it. This is the time of year where you're going to see those guys who are self-motivated succeed and those guys who aren't, you know, fall off. And so it's going to be interesting because you'll be able to see who really the grinders are. And, you know, this junior college level, it's all about being a grinder to succeed. Yep, and we talked about that data in our meeting that with this weird situation, we can give them the individual plan, but if they're not willing to put in the time and the effort, we're really just handing them a piece of paper and it's not going to do anything. And really just making sure that they're staying on top of their online classes, staying on top of their nutrition, their sleep cycle, everything in the weight room. So that it's a whole encompass project. It's not just one thing. They need to make sure they're doing everything to develop as a player. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things, you know, they got to put in the time, got to put the effort and you know, and for you, you know, you're a pitching coach, but you also um, use the driveline baseball stuff that they have out there, a program that, you know, a lot of major league players are using, getting into. Mm. What about that program? What about that uh, organization really kind of uh, excites you? And, and why are you going with that so much? Um, look, I've been trying to use their protocols for about five years now. And what I really appreciate from Driveline is how open and willing they are to discuss their research and their methods. And when they have something that maybe they were doing before and they, and they find out that it wasn't totally correct, they're willing to say, hey, we did the new research. This is what we found, and this is why we're making a change. And as a young pitching coach who's trying to learn and adapt myself and, and get better as a coach, I really appreciate somebody who's willing to say, hey, we tried this. This is what we found. This is what we're doing new. And just over these last five years, the amount of arm injuries that we've had and, and the programs I've been a part of has been, been so minimal that it's just been great to see the velocity jumps as long as, as well as just the health of the arms. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things I've been 
know, kind of following Centralia, you know, his Twitter account and, and yours and, and just seeing it. And you guys are preaching hard work, but you're also preaching health. It's important for those guys to, to get better, to improve, but you want to do it in a way that, you know, they're able to stay healthy, keep playing and have that, that longevity as a pitcher um, in the game of baseball. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do anything if you're not able to get on the field and actually play and practice and get better. And the other thing we preach, too, is that baseball is only a small part of our lives. And at some point, these, these guys are going to be husbands, they're going to have kids, and they're going to want to play catch with their son or their daughter. And we want them healthy in the longevity of their life, too, not just on the field. So making sure we're doing everything like, correct that they can take with them later in the life is a big piece. Yeah, and, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, having been around the college atmosphere, I see a lot of times where, you know, coaches, they care about the players, but they kind of almost forget about, you know, that there's things beyond that. And so I'm really love, I love the fact that the NWAC has so many great coaches, so many great programs to be a part of. And, you know, I'm expecting Centralia to be one of those programs that just keeps working their way up and be competitive uh, day in and day out going out there. Yeah. It's been fun joining the staff this year, coming from Valley Catholic high school and, when I met Kavika and Joe Ash and to see their playing careers uh, and just to see the plan that they had laid out, it was a very easy decision to have my wife and I move up to Centralia and join the program and just try to help out and keep moving the program forward and see if we can try to win an NRAC title. Yeah, that's obviously the goal. I mean, so, I mean, with this season, it threw things out of whack. Obviously, you know, no one really knows where they stood in the long run. Uh, so looking at next fall, what are some things that, you guys have as goals and what things are you really trying to hope to accomplish right off the bat when you guys get back to playing games? Uh, it's going to be really nice next fall coming in with the same coaching staff. The players are going to be a year older, uh, even though they'll technically be freshmen. I'll be in their second year in our program and we'll be such a more experienced team that we'll be able to get after it a little more in the fall and there'll be way less explaining and we can really have a great competitive atmosphere. And then next year as well, we're getting a brand new field on campus, so we'll have the ability to get outside a little bit more on the turf field, which is going to be great and really help, help our program. Yeah, that's always, you know, here in the Northwest, having, having a better, a good facility is almost as important as anything else because I know uh, just seeing the way we get rain, you know, even if it doesn't rain a lot, it still can be that puddling. So having a good complex is pretty important for the program. Yeah, and if it's not raining, it's at least cold. <laughs> it's never fun to stand outside and get rained on. And having the yeah. turf field will be nice. And luckily, we're able to use the hub as well there in Centralia, which has been a huge blessing to have. Yeah, definitely. The, the hub is a pretty nice location. In fact, you know, just having you know, just the uh, Fort Boris Park having all the fields there, and I know Baseball Northwest does their uh, big summer events there. So it's kind of nice for you guys. I mean, it's just it's in your neighborhood, your backyard all the time. Yeah, it's an easy five-minute drive to go to that event for me, and I can head home for lunch and see my wife and my daughter and still be able to recruit all day, and we don't have to make a four-hour drive to come watch some baseball games, which is really nice. I know, even for me, I mean, it's 45 minutes for me, which isn't too bad. I, I don't mind that, but, you know, having that little five-minute shoot over there is, is pretty nice. So, you know, but, but looking – really convenient. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, talking a little bit more about the Highline Bears this summer, uh, you know, kind of tell me your backstory. How did you get hooked up with, with the Highline Bears, and – uh, you know, just tell me a little bit about that team. Yeah, definitely. So we play in the Pacific International League. Um, we play against West Coast League, uh, CCL. And last summer they had an opening for their pitching coach position, and I went through the interview process and was lucky enough to come on board. Uh, and this this season they had a head coach opening, so again I applied, went through the process, and it's been a really fun atmosphere to be around. Justin Mosier, the GM, has done a great job of building the franchise. Um, we're trying, they've made no like excuses. The goal is to try to get in the West Coast League in the long run. Um, I know they have some exciting things coming up this summer that they haven't officially announced yet, but it's just a fun atmosphere with the crowd and all the games in between innings. And it's just a fun time for people in the local community. And then our players, for a lot of them, it's the first time they're playing in front of a huge crowd and getting to play against some of the other D1 guys. Because we have guys all the way from NWAX to Division Ones. We have guys from San Diego State. BYU, Wagner College, Centralia, Olympic, Wenatchee Valley, from all over the place. So it's really a fun summer to be a part of. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so change the topic a little bit. I, I was going through your Twitter a couple of days ago, and I saw that your wife claims to have seen every baseball movie at this point. Uh, is, is oh, she, yes. 
does she watch the movies because of you or does she actually like them? I think at the beginning of our relationship five years ago it was more just because I love baseball movies. But then as we've gone on, I think she's found some humor and really started to enjoy the movies. And <laughs> we were joking because the rookie was on ESPN that, that she had seen every single baseball movie. And I was like, all right, I have to prove a point. You haven't seen all of them. <laughs> and I was amazed at how many different movies on that list I, I had never heard of. So now these next couple of weeks, we have some more movies to go watch. I know. I was actually going through the list myself, and I was like, I, what is this? I've never heard of this. And I actually had to start Googling some because I was like, that can't be a baseball movie. No way. And sure enough, it, it was. Yeah, I actually had another coach in the NWAX text me and give me a movie recommendation from that, which was kind of funny. <laughs> I know. And from that, it just reminded me that I haven't watched the baseball documentary all the way through. So that's probably going to be on my uh, order it on Amazon pretty soon list to, to watch that. Nice. So yeah, I can have lots to watch the next couple of weeks. Which will be yeah, good. yeah, definitely. I know. I know. For me, I'm just aching to get out to the ball field and have a, a hamburger, especially like going up to Wheeler <laughs> Field and have a burger up there because it's just that's been so much a part of my life for. Well, I'm almost 40 years old, and so this is this is weird to not be out there right now having a burger. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird life for now being stuck at home and and wanting to be around the guys and and have some sunflower seeds at the park and, and talk baseball. And that's why I was really glad to come on your podcast and, and just talk a little baseball. I know. I mean, that was the thing before I started this. I mean, Eddie Smith, the assistant coach at LSU was like, you got to do this just so we can talk baseball. Cause I'm tired of not being able to talk <laughs> baseball. And, and it, I've loved it. I mean, having guys on like yourself and others, it, it's been fun. It's, it's been a good release for me because, you know, like you, I'm usually at the ball field every night and I've, it's just, it's just, different to not be out there right now yeah it's odd. i found myself re-watching last year's NWAC championships on youtube the other day just so i could see a little baseball <laughs> yeah i've caught myself doing that a few times as well so so last last question i have for you you know once again we're in this time where guys are at home guys are not able to do anything really out on the field but what advice do you have for, for those high schoolers and and even those you know junior college guys Right now, what can they do to get to be the best on the field? Yeah, I would say do anything that you can with whatever resources you have. And maybe that's reading a book about baseball, about the mental game of baseball. Or maybe that's grabbing a baseball and finding a wall and working on short ops. Or maybe you have a full set of driveline gear and you can go through your plyo work. Whatever it is that you have the resources to use, try to use this time to get better in, in some facet of the game. And don't just find yourself playing PlayStation and, and hanging out on the couch eating chips. Like, just continue to develop in whatever way you can. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate you coming on. Have a good day. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was Ben Harley. He is the, the pitching coach for Satoya Community College and the head coach for the Highline Bears. I am I am desperately hoping for summer ball because I actually wanted to cover the Highline Bears a little bit this summer because – they have some guys on the team that I, I want to photograph. And uh, and honestly, I, I photographed them before in the past when they've come to uh, Longview to play the Cowlitz Black Bears. So just hoping, you know, that we have summer ball. That's really what my prayer is right now, just to get baseball going again. So that way, um, you know, we can be back to normal. So, guys, with that, I am Josh, the 90 know-it-all. I am thankful you guys are listening. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying this. I'm hoping this gives you guys some – time and some moments away from what is going on right now in the world because it's crazy it's crazy uh, but my recommendation is stay home wash your hands you know I don't think any of us realized just how serious this was but I think we do now and I uh, you know let's do our part and let's let's get baseball back in the field so guys with that I'm signing off and guys next week I have some amazing guests uh, even more coming down the pipeline. And, you know, keep checking in and I'll talk to you guys later.